Hi, welcome to Amosmith.com. Today we're going to revisit something we did about two years ago and I'm going to show you how to make an overall length gauge. What I'm using here is my Weatherby Vanguard and 7mm Remington Magnum and basically what it is, it's just a Howa 1500 action uh, built by Weatherby. What I have is I got two cases here, both basically the same and what they allow me to do these is to seat a bullet by hand without it falling into the case and we're going to need a set of calipers to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to take the bullet, we're going to just hand start it into the case and then we're going to bolt it up, we're going to take it out and we're going to put the micrometer to it. And This will give us a basic idea of where we want to seat the bullets to get as close to the lands and grooves as possible and also it's kind of a good idea to see where it, where it is as far as um, where your magazine length is versus seating to the lance. So let me get a close up of the bullets and show what we're going to be doing. What we're going to do is I'm going to take this Sierra 160 grain, I'm going to seat it by hand into this cartridge case. If you full length size your cartridge, you're not going to be able to do it because it's going to have too much neck tension and it's going to take the force of the press in order to seat the bullet in there. So what you want to do is take your bullet, and start it like that. Here's another one and this is with the Remington bulk 150 gram bolt. You can see how I can just seat them like that. Now what we need to do is bolt it into the action and get a measurement and then we're going to, once we get that measurement we want to back off of it a little bit then we can play with it either closer or further away from the lens and grooves. Okay the first bullet I'm going to get my overall length on is the Remington and the reason why I want to do this is because it has the cantilever and this will show you how deep it's going to seat and this is going to give you kind of a reference point right here. So what we do is we take the cartridge we start into the chamber. You don't want to put it in the magazine and try it because you may push the bullet in inadvertently. Alright, take the bolt, push it shut and then bolt it down. When you extract it, depending on what kind of uh, ejector you have, this is an automatic ejector. So when, it, as the bullet gets to by here, I want to put my finger against it to keep it from flying across the room. And it does not want to just pop out. So, what we need to do is depress the bolt release now we have it. It got pushed in a little bit but not too much. Put that guy there. Now for the Sierra bullet. Same thing. Start it. And what you'll feel is when you close the bolt on it, it'll get to about here and it'll, it'll have some resistance. What you want to do is push it with your hand and what that's doing is seating the bullet. Whoops. Now this one did just fine. Let's get out of here. Now just visually looking at it we can see that the Sierra was pushing deeper than the Remington. The Sierra, the o jab is a little further forward than the, um, the Remington, but we see the Remington was pushing a little deeper. What we have to do now is take our micrometer and take a measurement. So now we got these two here. Now what we need to do is take a measurement. All I'm going to do is going to take the overall length of it, and what you want to do is record it in your notes. So here I got 3.283 inches, which is fine. And on the Remington, I have an overall length of 3.283. 
3.403. So it's quite a bit longer. Depending on what you're doing, if you're hunting, you don't want to do this. You want to make it magazine length so that you can put as many rounds into the uh, magazine as you can. And But if you're shooting for the best possible groups, you want to get the bullet as close to the lance and grooves as you can. And from here, what you want to do is take it one one thousandth deeper just so you're actually off the lands and grooves because what will happen is on bulk bullets especially the ogive will have a little bit of variance on it so one bullet may chamber just right without it touching lands and grooves the other one might be a little bit longer and you may actually jam it in there so this will give you some room to play and as we can see, because these two bullets are completely different, they have two completely different overall lengths. Even though we look here on the Remington, the cantaloupe is nowhere close to the mouth of the case for a crimp. What I want to do here is show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the bullets. Here's the Sierra before we made the overall length gauge. And compared to the two, and then here's the overall length gauge that we made. Here's the Remington that we chambered, and here's the Remington just started into the case by hand. You can see there's quite a bit of difference between the, those two bullets, and you'll find that depending on the bullet make, the weight, and the style of the bullet will determine a lot on whether or not you're going to have seat them deeper or further out. You can go ahead if you're going on a hunting trip to seat them to magazine length, but to test the consistent crimp arm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to seat them to the lands and grooves, then crimp them from there. Um, the bolts we're going to test for sure are the Sierras, and we're going to test the, the Remington's as well. However, we're going to seat them to the um, Kenlure. I want to show an example of a bullet and discuss with you why they throw these rifles the way they do. This is a Hornady 175 grain round nose. This is pretty much the heaviest bullet you're going to get, unless you go with the Barnes 195 grain. Um, as we can see, the one we just started into the case, as compared to the, the overall length gauge, we can see when we seated it by making the overall length gauge, it seats it almost all the way to the cantaloupe. And where they throw these rifles is they want to make sure that you can shoot any bullet manufactured in this rifle without cramming it into the lands and grooves. And the round nose is a perfect example of why they do that. The round nose has a very long bearing surface, therefore the ogive is going to be quite long on this bullet. So we, what we can see from here is we don't have to seed it too much deeper in order to get it to the, the cantaloupe in order for us to apply our crimp. 